Well, hello, hello, everyone. It's Shanti Tigers here with Profit More Financial Services. I hope that you're having an amazing day. And I wanted to let you know that if you are new here, hello and welcome. And on this channel, what we talk about is business and we talk about accounting, taxes, how to save money in taxes, and situations that may be affecting your business. And we also talk about, go. we dive into Texas legislation as it affects businesses as well. So today we're gonna to be talking about what is an employee versus a contractor and what does that mean for your business? First and foremost, it's important uh, for me to say this is for informational and educational purposes only. Everyone's situation is different, so make sure that you consult with a professional. Um, you can either call our office or seek out the um, assistance of an accountant in your area to help you with your specific situation. So this is general information that is just for your educational purposes. All right, so number one, uh, first and foremost, it's important to make sure that you are identifying employees versus um, contractors. A lot of people, uh, business owners, try to avoid um, having an official employee because of all of the extra um, paperwork that an employee um, actually requires as well as taxes that have to be paid. So make sure that you are following the guidelines and the rules. And the first uh, way to know if you should actually be um, having the person that's working with you, if they should be classified as an employee, is if you actually tell them what time they have to come and what time they have to leave for a specific shift that is one of the telltale signs. Um, and then also, if you require them to be in the office along with telling them what time they need to be there, along with um, letting them know when they can actually have a break, more than likely you're dealing with an employee and not a independent contractor. And if you are providing them with equipment such as um, cell phones, laptops, uh, things of that nature, then more than likely this person is an employee. And if you are ever audited and it's found out that you were paying them as a contractor, you could be paying back pay in payroll taxes that should have been paid, you know, during the time prior to that. Okay. So as far as that is concerned, an employee is going to be issued a W-2 at the end of the year. When you when you're doing their payroll, there should be a 941 that's done on a quarterly basis, a 940 on an annual basis, and there should be um, data documented within your accounting software showing how much you paid in accumulation to that employee throughout the year and the associated taxes. Now, with an independent contractor, an independent contractor, they're more than likely they're going to be using their own equipment. They are going to be paying for all the costs that it takes to um, pretty much execute the job. And they are going to have an open space and time where they are allowed to complete the job. And they're not necessarily uh, mandated to be on site in order to be an independent contractor. When you start mandating that individuals are on site to do work, when you uh, dictate what times they can actually work and when they can take breaks and things of that nature, more than likely you have an employee. Now on the I IRS website, um, there's actually um, some common rules as it pertains to if you're dealing with an employee or um, an independent contractor, a self-employed person. And I will put this in the link below for your reading, um, for you to get some more insight as to if you should actually be filing social security taxes, federal taxes, and Medicare taxes. Um, I just did, recently did a video about the 941 form and the 941 form is for employers who have employees that they're paying, you know, either, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, or every month, they're paying actual payroll to those individuals. So you want to make sure you're following the rules because you don't want to have an accumulation of, you know, payroll taxes that are just adding up in arrears for your company and make sure. So the W-2 goes to the employee. For the contractor, they receive a 1099. They are actually responsible for their federal taxes. You are not responsible for that. You don't have to file the 941 forms, the 940s for independent contractors. They are responsible for all of that, okay? And that is why a lot of uh, individuals opt to pay 
um, employees as independent contractors, even though they're not supposed to. So definitely make sure that you're not falling into that trap and make sure that you're aware of the laws and the rules as it pertains to employees versus independent contractors. Yes, you may feel like it's saving you money right now, but later on down the line, will it be worth it? Um, the fact that you are paying someone as an independent contractor versus an employee when you know they should be um, an employee. OK, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. And, you know, some people they may not know, um, but it is quite serious. Um, you know, you can definitely check it out the link and it, it goes into more depth about um, the possible consequences of paying a person as an independent contractor versus an employee. All right. And so next time, stay profitable and stay great. And we will talk to you soon. If you found this video helpful, please share um, with a, a entrepreneur and subscribe. We love to have you a part of the tribe here over at Profit Mode. So um, thank you so much and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.